David, Korea and Japan are so good at soccer. As you can see in the World Cup, they're amazing. But China sucks. Why is that? And what else could it mean? Oh, man. All week long, I've been seeing the anime Japan national team memes, uh, the Korea heartthrob memes. I hope they win their games today against Croatia and Brazil. But I was kind of wondering. I was like, yo, man, when am I going to see China in a World Cup? Because they got a population of $1.4 billion. They've invested billions of dollars in their national program and their youth development. And they just cannot get good at soccer or even decent, to be honest. Hey, man, why are you so concerned with the Chinese team, David? You should just be concerned with the U.S. team because you're from the U.S. You're American. Hey, man, I have been following the U.S. team. Shout out to them. They had a great run. But I do think that my Japanese and Korean friends are also, like, very proud and following their, I guess, like, motherland heritage teams. But uh, I do think there's an element of, like, yeah, but that's because Korea and Japan are good and China's bad. So for you to even be wondering this, it makes me question you. Uh, hey, 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 it's not just us wondering this, by the way, guys. If you Google, why does China suck at soccer? There's literally a hundred threads and different articles and people asking this question. And they're not all Asian. Like, I think these are some just like soccer fans that are just like scratching the head being like, yeah, uh, China should be better, right? Why? <laughs> Let me look into this. Right. They want to see the game be more popular globally, get more money, get more like whatever, whatever. So, yeah, I mean, there's like so many breakdowns. So let's get into some of the mainstream reasons, Andrew, by the the way we know we are not some soccer experts but let's get into oh. what we learned oh and after we give the mainstream reasons we're gonna give some deep cut implications on Ooh. what these reasons mean guys it's, it's about to get yeah, a little yeah, crazy yeah. So, so we're gonna get through the soccer part i get it we don't Go. know but we're gonna get to the part that we're good at later andrew the truth is soccer despite being sort of popular in china it's just like not there the, the systems the desire for the pro level development uh it's there for basketball badminton table tennis regular tennis golf swimming but for soccer it's just like way far behind and despite china injecting the money andrew the, the, the system buildup just got jumbled and bungled well you know actually the u.s men's soccer team wasn't always great either it was actually struggling for a long time despite a lot of kids in america playing soccer on some level, like when they're kids, they were on soccer teams. But yeah, just the professional feeder systems, it, it just didn't make great players for some reason. And in India, we just don't care, man. We care more about cricket and don't care about soccer. Andrew, there's also a gigantic difference in China's like youth development systems that are more, I would say, probably sort of based off Russia versus uh, Japan and Korea. They're, I believe their youth development systems for sports, and this goes for all sports, not just soccer, basketball, baseball, whatever, more mimic the US, Canada, and uh, Western European countries. Yeah, basically it's like, hey, you have regular kids who if they have a passion for a sport, they can go pursue it. In China, a lot of the people who are in these special athletic academies, they're kind of chosen from a young age and maybe they look at it as like a better life, you know, from their poor village or for example or whatever. But if you do that for that reason, that doesn't mean you love the game. And soccer is a highly skilled sport, so you do have to love the game and develop these skills over a long period of time. So you kind of have to play the game since you're a young Yeah, age. I think soccer is particularly a game of love and passion. And um, I think even basketball, even though height is a big advantage and you can't teach height, at some point when you get to a pro international level, your lack of love or lack of passion for the game will show through. Also, your lack of like conventional intelligence. If you've only been in the sports academy, only learning about sports and not about like improving your math skills at some point they kind of cross over and you're going to need the math skills to understand the complex schematic play action reads that you're going to need to make at a soccer or even just a basketball plays level all right and the last mainstream reason is that like although china pumps a lot of money into soccer which they have in the past and it actually has failed the whole program it's because they just hired a bunch of expensive foreign coaches and foreign players to be on these teams, but that doesn't actually help your domestic role players get any better because those foreign players can't be on your men's team in the future, you know, to represent the country. And uh, oftentimes they just get so much attention. It doesn't like breed like good teamwork. You yeah. Know? And I heard that was di driven by like pot potentially even corruption, like certain officials, they had an incentive to boost the numbers. The quickest way to boost the numbers is to get the washed up superstars from Europe and Latin America. But obviously uh, that's not the real work like at the grassroots to develop like fundamental building blocks.
All right, David, those were the mainstream reasons, but we got to delve a little bit deeper into some theories on why China sucks so bad at soccer and, and what it, but what the implications are of it, all right? All right. Um, I think one of the implications that I heard, and I read this theory from a Chinese person, Andrew. And it was an interesting theory. Yeah, is that Chinese men in particular cannot have good teamwork together because Chinese women's sports, whether it's in basketball or football or baseball or whatever, they can perform quite well. But for some reason, and the Chinese men just cannot run a system together. Nobody can make the right sacrifices. Nobody can put team first over self. People are trying to do a bunch of fancy moves that have no practical application within that given scenario. And uh, yeah, that often leads to things falling apart because Andrew, you already know in a team of 10 people, you only need two, three selfish guys. And all of a sudden the whole system starts to implode. Guys, and soccer... Uh, is very much a team sport, right? You don't score a lot. Like, you might have a whole career, depending on what position you play, where you never score, right? And so it is a very selfless sport. Plus, you're also running a lot. But I will also say this, case number two, is that the Chinese men's basketball team, which basketball is like the favorite sport of China, by the way. So they love this sport. And there is a lot of athletic Chinese men. But for some reason, that Chinese men's basketball team still underperforms. Yeah, they so still lose is, in international competition more than they should. Obviously, they're not like bottom of the barrel, but they're definitely not dominating considering like Yao Ming and stuff came from China. Yeah, so I think at individual sports, uh, Chinese athletes can do really great, right, in the Olympics. You're talking you know. about stacking sometimes the more obscure sports in the yeah. Olympics because, you know, at the end of the day, Andrew. Gold medals, gold medal. <laughs> hey, hey, they got, they got some track and field gold medals too. But I'm just saying, I guess uh, the implication is that Chinese men don't work well together and they somehow lack some unity or maybe... That maybe the women I, have, right? I don't know. It seems like the women work better together, guys. You let me know in the comments down below. I mean, some people were pointing... think that's a reach. Yeah, let some, me know in the comments down below. I mean, some people were even pointing at like, whether that's eunuch culture, selfish culture, Xiao Huangdi, which is like little emperor, you know, you're the only child culture, princeling culture. There was like so many many theories and I thought that's why this question was so interesting about Chinese soccer sucking because there's so many deeper implications for society and the systems that govern it all right David here's another one here's another one guys to be really good at sports to be very skilled at sports you have to be very very passionate about it at a young age and you have to have fun with it it has to be organic. It has to come from your passion. That's where you get the drive to earn this, to gain the skill. And David, maybe growing up in China, uh, it's not the most fun and passionate childhood. Maybe. Probably <laughs> I, not for the majority of people. Like, yeah, I'm not saying I, I everybody. I can see childhoods in much poor, less economically strong countries potentially being more free, filled with love and passionate. Because there's not necessarily a correlation between, like, shiny factories and stuff like that and the other thing. I agree with that. Yeah, obviously, guys, I'm not saying that valuing sports is the number one most important thing that a country has to do. Yeah, why are you saying? Like, you're <laughs> acting like because we're not good at soccer. It's like, it's bad. We, like, make all the technology. We have DJI drone. Make a robot. Some of the other countries, they don't make a robot. Just make soccer. Yeah. Dave, Uruguay is very good at soccer. But who cares about Uruguay? <laughs> just kidding, guys. Uh, well, just we're just talking about in a macro. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but I, I guess uh, but sports, as we know, as Americans, like we all, we we find sports very important, right? It, it builds teamwork, and it and it also uh, transfers into the classroom and into the career. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you could even say in America we maybe value sports and entertainment. Like, too much. It's getting to a point where people need to come back to the STEM subject. But, yeah, in China, I could see it actually benefiting society to be more free and have, like, more sports and more love and more passion. Uh, you know, every society just got a different balance at a different moment in its timeline. All right, you guys. I mean, we went through the reasons why. I mean, I think... They're pretty deep cut. Obviously, on the surface level, they could be very basic level youth development infrastructure and funding, I guess, like knowledge base issues. However, Andrew, I just think that, you know, China is just still behind when it comes to certain things, you know, like whether that's the entertainment, soft power, soccer being related to soft power. I think it's like maybe 10, 20, 30 years behind and it just takes time and it takes time and generations for people to like lay the foundation of like what are the fundamental ingredients, you know? You always have your talent pool, which is your ingredients, but then how do you just select who moves on to the next level out of that talent pool? And then not only that, Andrew, that's the, that's the system, that's the chef. There's the ingredients and then there's the chef 
and then there's the cooking tools in the kitchen, and they all matter. Guys, there are so many people and so much money that goes into creating great global professional athletes. You know, everything you're talking about, kids program, the coaches, each coach got to be good. Because anywhere along the way, one coach could really hurt and suppress a kid's ability to be really good at that sport. So I think, oh. like we're saying, it's a whole system. So you guys let us know in the comments down below what you think uh, on, on why China sucks at soccer. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of reasons. And uh, hopefully, you know, it'll change in the future. But honestly... Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't, you know, I guess uh, China just won't be in the World Cup. Yeah. I guess. I, I think the basketball one to me, and by the way, guys, I'm, I'm hurt not, about the basketball. Yeah, the one. basketball one is that one really bothers me because I'm like, dude, you guys put in Yo. so much money. There's so many good Chinese individual players. And as a team, the teamwork is so bad. Even when you just Andrew, I played with Chinese college players in China before and they're, they're much better than me, Andrew, and they still, like, sometimes the teamwork, the, the reads, the ball movement, the spacing, the movement off ball is so yeah, bad. Yeah, man. Anecdotally speaking, you know, we play with a lot of international Chinese students. Uh, we play basketball with them, and, you know, they might have good skills or even re really great athleticism, but their teamwork overall is bad. Uh, especially so, the passing, man. The passing oh, and man. the spacing is crazy. Yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, let us know in the comments down below. That is our first video about soccer on this channel. Hope you guys liked it. Hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pot Boys. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.